I bought a set of pots from Harbor Freight. Uh, I, I think there was four pots all together with lids. Which made a stainless steel. It's just a real thin stainless steel. But still, it probably served its purpose. Very cheap. I think five bucks a piece or something. But anyhow, I'm trying to modify this one. So it fits in my on my wood burner. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this. I'm, this is for maple syrup. Uh, there's maple sap in there right now, and those are two six-gallon uh, stock pots. These here are Luneman, and they're quarter-inch. These are heavy. These these are nice pots. They're like 35 bucks a piece from Sam's Club, and they're they're the heaviest pot I've seen out there. Um, and they're six gallon a piece. The problem is I'm I can only boil down maybe half of what I collect a day doing it this way with this wood burner or wood burner's coal stove. It's actually a coal stove. I burn a lot of wood in it. But anyhow, the slant on the back of it there is what I'm trying to contour this to. You can see. There's hardly any ledge here to set the pot on. So I gotta cut at the angle I need. And then once the weight's in there too, the water, it'll help hold it back. I don't want to leave it on there too long. The stainless don't take long to heat up. But that's what I'm aiming for. Got a bunch of rods. Brazing uh, rods. Silver. Silver and copper. It's a mixture of silver and copper. People who do refrigeration work and use them a lot. 15% silver and uh, some phosphorus and the rest is copper. And they're made for, for exactly doing well, they're made for refrigeration, like I said. But it'll work on something like this. The problem is, um, I don't know if I can get a decent job. I'm going to give it a try. So what I got fit this up a little better and then I'm going to try brazing it together. A braze I guess is considered like a solder because you're not really welding it. You're, you're uh, melt, you're uh, getting the metal hot enough to take on another metal and that'll hold it together and that's a braze or a solder this is considered more of a braze I don't know why that is I guess it's, it is a higher temperature uh, it's over 1500 degrees where solder solder is only like 500 degrees so if I ended up forgetting about this pot on there and it boiling down and cooking to nothing and I had it soldered, it would melt the solder off. The stove gets at least, I don't, I, it gets over 500. Um, but if that happens with being braised, it, I don't think it's going to get up to 1700 degrees. It would have the house smelling pretty good by then. I would think I know I did something wrong. But that's the idea behind it. I could weld it. But this is so thin, I think I want to try a braze first. If it braze is good, if not, I'll try a weld, but I think it's going to be harder to weld than it is to braze. This is, uh, I know you welders or brazers out there are familiar with this kind of stuff. This is that Stay Sill uh, from Paris. I have some Harris 15. These ones I think are, are this, or must be made by Harris too, because that's the name on these. Stay Slave. So, Stay Seal. I think that's how they pronounce that. Stay Seal. Yeah. But it's, a, it's the black. They have a white, it's a lower temperature. This is the black, the higher temperature. And that's what you use for stainless steel. Because you got to get stainless steel, spreads the heat real quick. And that's why I think it'll be better than aluminum too, um, for, for boiling things. I think the, it'll boil quicker. 
maybe. We'll find out. Plus, it was very cheap. If I make a mistake, I didn't lose all that much. I was trying to figure out a way to get this metal to hold together for me to braise it. Uh, being in stainless steel, the magnet won't stick to it. But I have a magnet here in underneath, and then one on top, and that should hold it in place for me. That's This stay cell uh, black flux is, uh, I thought it was a maybe a clear liquid, is what I originally thought it would be when I got it because it sounded like a liquid inside, but it's more like a uh, emulsion, a water based. I think it, I don't know what base it is. I have to look at it. But it reminds you of a water based emulsion, which is, uh, just something that's thinned out by using water, but it may be thinned out uh, using something else. I don't know. I wire brushed it to keep it nice and clean. As soon as I hit that, it wants to move everything. That should be the tap there. Well, I think I finally figured it out how to do it. I got it tacked. I forgot to turn the camera on. But I got it tacked um, in two spots. There and there. So I'll try to finish it off here. So what I ended up uh, using to clean it up, uh, which I knew worked on copper and stainless be before I started this, is muriatic, muriatic acid. It's the same kind of acid they use to change the pH in a swimming pool. Um, 
I watered it down about half and half and used it to clean the metal off. It doesn't look too good, it has a lot of, that's from the flux, a lot of that. But I got one little leak in it and I repositioned the handles because the handles weren't on very well. So I plugged the holes where the handles were. And I do have a little leak, it's been sitting overnight. I can see a drip there, which actually is probably about the third time I tried. And the first time there was a lot of leaks. But that's when I started using the muriatic acid. That helped quite a bit. Clean it up and then flux it with that black flux. And I had water boiling in it. It worked pretty good for on the stove, so it should do the job. The inside I'll clean up real good. Um, steel wool or something. Anyhow, anyhow that's that's it sitting on the stove. You can see it works pretty decent for what I wanted it for. I only have room for so many pots. Make a sap. Or syrup. And that one I'm sort of using as a preheat pot that does heat quicker than the aluminum pots do. So I think that should work. Yeah, uh, any comments about that brazing job? Uh, I'd like to see, I mean, any bad comments about it. I would like to see what they can do on like a 30 gauge stainless steel, if that's even 30 gauge. So, I mean, you touch it with a torch and you burn a hole through it. It did take me a little bit of time to get used to how much heat I needed to apply. Once I got used to it though, it went pretty quick. There you go.